Hey guys, it's Julie, and we haven't just done one of these like chatty patty videos in a while, girl. A bitch been slack, and I'm getting <laughs> a lot been going on, girl. A lot been going on. Sign an NDA, so can't even really talk about it. And you might not never know about it. It's unfortunate because it looks like I don't be doing nothing, but I be doing something on a regular basis. I don't think I've ever like in the past really got into the sticks of like discussing other YouTuber drama. But a sis got thoughts about this Tati Westbrook and James Charles business. And since I did give all of my Saturday morning to this white woman's beef. Yes, I did. Now, let me tell you something. I, something about Tati is just very antebellum. I sum it on the porch. I know nothing about the slaves that my family owned. Teas, you know, very like wealthy white woman. I don't do the blacks type thing. Now, I don't, I'm not saying the woman is racist, but I'm, I'm saying she's very white, okay? In a way that makes me feel like, wow, slavery, you know? Is it just, am I making sense here? These are the pretenses I'm getting from her. And James Charles, um, the, the biggest reason why I've ever watched Charles's content is because the use you know, I follow some celebrity youths on Instagram and they really like him. And I will say, you know, the production value, you got 16 million followers, you are very wealthy, you have money, you can do what I can't do. And so occasionally, you know, I peep and I pop in and it's like, oh, okay, sisters. And someone who talks faster than me is like fascinating, okay? But something about him also just rubs me as like, there's actually a Hidden Brain episode, I believe is the podcast, about like empathy and how a study was done that actually found that the wealthier people grow up, that the less, like scientifically, the less empathy triggers they have. So that typically people who grow up in oppressed communities or working class or economically disadvantaged communities do are innately going to have more empathy like literally the triggers in our brain that tell us to have empathy and compassion for others are gonna be way more heightened than someone who grows up wealthy. And I actually think as much as I could say that's probably absolutely James Charles, I'm gonna go with, you know, as much as Tati dropped the T, sis didn't drop the T until it impacted her coins. Like, let's be clear here. <laughs> I'm just saying you put on a privileged white boy and I get it, let me backtrack here. Let me backtrack here, where my thoughts are going, right? What I feel like happens a lot on YouTube is that YouTube has pushed, broken down and pushed back a lot of barriers. But it is very, very, very District 1 to me, right? Very much so, as in the Hunger Games, very sort of the capital, right? In that, yes, it's, it's pushed back for the LGBTQIA+, community but you know out of all those acronyms the people representing each of those acronyms are always going to be white passing they're going to project the image of wealth the sheen of wealth they are going to kind of push the boundaries but still fit into a very specific sort of imagery when it comes to the latino and the muslim community you still see the same thing right typically people that live more on the on the european section of beauty that are going to fit more into a white passing aesthetic and then with the advent of like everyone getting fillers and Botox and like this slightly ambiguously ethnic look, but still a very sort of European centric ideal of beauty. I don't know if maybe the black community on the side of the black community that I live in, we, but even still though, actually we not because the black adjacents, <clears throat> you see what I'm saying here? I think we do a little bit better, maybe because I live in this world. I feel like we do a smidge bit better because the conversation of colorism, we have a bit more language to actually discuss it other than just saying someone is white passing. And so, but I'm saying colorism still real bad on the black side of YouTube, girl. It mm, is bad over here too. But all that to say, for as much as James Charles, the person defies a lot of the way homophobia has been fed into our community, I also feel like he is a very binary and white character, right? Um, that reeks of privilege. And so I'm not surprised because sure he's wealthier than what he grew up, but I don't, I mean, I feel like he probably had a similar like Taylor Swift, like my daddy was upper class, so I'm chilling type vibe. And so I'm not surprised to hear that like his interactions with people have lacked the sort of empathy and compassion, and basic humane respect of other content creators. Um, I'm not surprised when that whole follow up happened with Manny MUA and there was a whole video of him like looking at this and discuss at one of his fans. You know, and I've seen some conversation with this fallout being about like, 
what's YouTube's responsibility in this? What's the audience's responsibility in this? But I think what's most interesting is people are cultivating audiences of teenagers, like 12 to 14 year olds. And I just think a lot of what makes someone popular on YouTube really is like people like to oogle and ogle and then aspire. There's other YouTubers that I'm thinking of who, when they first came on, you know, they, they didn't fit into the mainstream ideal of beauty, but you know, with their ascension, they quickly definitely started projecting very similar images of wealth that make someone like the girl whose, parent, whose mom was on Full House and is now in the college scandal, Olivia Jade, like that same sort of aesthetic just kind of gets constantly replicated and then allowing the people to become very successful. So all that to say, uh, I just think James Charles reeks of privilege and so I've never really gotten into it because um, I don't really hate watch YouTubers. And as much as I think what Tatiana said in that video, is her name Tatiana? That's my sister's name. So she called herself Tati, he was gonna call her Tatiana. For as much as what Tati expressed about his actions, and it's like, you know, wow, she really is calling him out. She really is coming with receipts. I don't know if I really have a whole lot of investment in chastising James, because the, the conundrum is that Tati didn't say anything until it directly impacted her business. And as much as she can flex and say I'm wealthy and you know I have a lot of access and I'm good, whether I do this or not because my husband is also good, so we good, we gonna be good, okay? That all of a sudden you have these ethical standards that cannot be rescinded when it is in, it's in the preview of your hair vitamin business. Now, I don't know if the video is unlisted or not. I think I might have taken it down. I done did a video about the hair vitamin swindle back in like 2013, sis. It's been about six years, okay? It's still a swindle. Now, if you take hair vitamins for the ease, because then you don't have to take the vitamin B, what is it, biotin. If, if it's easier for you to take one pill, you like the chewies, whatever, these are not FDA regulated, like you don't really know what you're really getting, whatever. But now all of a sudden, you have this ethical standard about that Sugar Bear hair is gummies and his audience is mostly young kids, and so he shouldn't be marketing that anyway. Now, you know good and God darn well, if you ain't had no hair vitamin company, sis, if Halo Beauty did not exist, you might have pulled Homeboy to the side. You might have said something to on the low, but you would be right up here defending him if he was not interjecting your coin. This is the same issue with, like, Jeffree Star, right? Not fucking with it. I'm not. I'm just not. They, it's like, it's pandering. And it's only an issue when it impacts your bank account, but you can so easily turn the other cheek to everything else. You know, she sat there and named all these things that have been going on for years. And she takes ownership of helping to uplift and support him and really put him on in ways that most YouTubers will never, never have access to. And it basically took him not promoting your hair vitamin for you to say, okay, enough is enough. Like, sis, you ain't shit neither. Now, the true tea is that James Charles is not going to be really hurt from this. Just like Laura Lee and Manny MUA and Jeffrey and all them other hoes ain't really hurt from this. The boy got 16 million followers. He, he could lose 5 million and still be okay, okay? How many YouTubers have 10 million followers? How many black YouTubers have 10 million subscribers? Oh wait, please, please put me on. How many black YouTubers who identify with the black community have 10 million subscribers? How many black YouTubers who discuss black, who discuss issues that are impertinent to the black community have 10 million subscribers? Okay, look, the toiling is tough out here in these streets. And the, the, the TLDR is that like, I think we can all enjoy it because it has nothing to do with any of us. So we can, ooh, we can watch it and be like, mm, mm. Cause you know, I went back, I watched Tati video, I watched James video, I watched all four of the tea spill videos. Then I walked back and watched Gabriel Zamora's video. Like, these are, these, none of these are channels that I would typically watch, but you know, it's like everyone enjoys a little mess here and again, you know, it, it fills our, our, our petty spirits. Your petty spirits are filled, but I'm not going to keep up with any of these characters because keeping up with them just fuels their pockets and their incomes and it really does nothing for the black community on YouTube, right? It does nothing for the even past the black community. There are just a lot of us on here 
I don't really care for the term people of color, but there are a lot of YouTubers who do not fit into the acceptable images. And I wanna really rely on the fact that it is an image of wealth, right? The access to altering your body and altering the shape of your face and being able to buy the expensive cosmetics and do the expensive skincare routines and feeding and, and getting your teeth done and doing all these things, right? That have become the standard of like acceptance on YouTube that a lot of content creators just are never gonna have that access and they're doing really important things on YouTube and they're still not being seen or heard and it's rough out here in the streets. So I don't wanna get this too much energy, but I just wanna say, Tatiana is scammer too, okay? And all the characters in this scream privilege, they scream like obscene amount of wealth. And I don't really think there is anything that can be done differently in this context to prevent this from happening, to prevent people like James Charles from ascending to the top. Like there's not one fix for this. Um, because in the same time that Tati might be taking down James, she's supporting Jeffree Star. In the same time she's taking down James, she's acknowledging that for years she accepted his behavior because it was coming from someone who looks like someone in her community, because it was coming from someone who had the same level of wealth and access that she had, and so she could accept it and turn a blind eye to it. And I, I think this is gonna be an ongoing issue because YouTube really does kind of give credence to these sort of content creators, the, ta the Tanya Montagues, like these absurd, wealthy, clueless white kids and it's just gonna keep repeating itself and I'm just not gonna have a big investment in it. But I did wanna come and give my little rambling thoughts on the Tati and James situation. And so that's it. Let me know about your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you see a solution? Who do you feel is responsible for changing, I don't know, changing the guard? At this point, like, I mean, I guess YouTube can do a, do more. I, I, you know, I wish we, I don't really focus on the other communities because I really just wish we as my community would be engaging in the same way these white teenagers are engaging. But it's also like, you know, you can't, you, this, it's, it's not worth stressing myself out about, you know, I gotta meet my audience where they're at and keep it moving. And that, that's that on that. But let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and I'll holler at you later. Deuces!